Okay, let's talk about gravitational waves. Uh, remember in Newton theory, which is a static theory, given source a field is established instantaneously. The gravitational potential depends explicitly on spatial coordinate, but not on time. But relativity treats space and time on equal footing, so therefore it's not surprising that GR uh, for will have a metric that propagates, just like in Maxwell theory, outward from the source with the finite speed of C. Okay. Once you GR necessarily depends on time, and this is so therefore predicts gravitational waves. Uh, just like we can shake electric charge to general electromagnetic waves, we can also shave a mass to general gravitational waves. Since gravity in ordinary cases is extremely weak force, so mostly we can take the metric field to be close, it's almost flat, it means you have g mu nu equal to eta mu nu plus a small correction h mu nu. Okay, in which we can ignore further gravitational wave generated by the gravitational field itself. So in which we can linearize the theory. Okay, we don't have to, we can ignore the linear effect is, is, is small. So therefore in this approximation, gravitational wave can be viewed as small curvature ripples propagating in flat space time. Remember the wave equation for electromagnetic potentials uh, due to a current density, it can be written this way. This, uh, uh, the Lambertian acting on the potential equal to uh, to the charge to the charge current. The current uh, for a perturbed gravitational wave obeys a very similar equation. The Lambertian act on the H fields as equal to the T mu nu. Okay. Now, when we wrote down the electromagnetic potential case, we have made it a, a choice, so called Lorentz gauge. And similar here, we have made a, a coordinate choice, so called the transverse traceless gauge. Uh, so, but anyway, so still, I mean, just all this very analogous way you can write down the wave equation for gravitational wave. But gravitational wave is a tensor wave. Meaning, for a plane wave solution, for a wave propagated in the z direction, okay, uh, the z direction just like the plane wave factor here. Now, the the, the polarization factor in front now become a four by four uh, matrices. So it's, it's a polarization uh, is a transverse because it only have the x y direction because we're propagating the z direction. And uh, have two independent elements. One I call H plus, the other one H cross, and uh, these are two independent polarization states. Remember, all massless particle propagate with uh, no matter what spin they have, have two independent polarization states. Uh, remember, we talked about a gravitational tidal uh, gravity. You have a longitudinal stretching and the transverse compressions. Uh, same way, if you talk about gravitational, the effect of gravitational wave acting on test particles, uh, it will alternately compress and elongate the space direction, perpendicular direction probably the transverse wave. Okay. And these tidal effects will deform a circle of test particles into ellipses. It was, if I have a circle of particles, it will stretch uh, it stretch in one direction and compress in the other direction and compress in the other direction and stretch the other okay. So so uh, this uh, the first line is for the uh, a plus polarization and the second line for for the uh, for the cross polarization. <coughs> but you notice this uh, the sim the similarity to the tidal effect we talked about previously. And uh, uh, this tensor wave, it will correspond to the fact that the graviton, which is particle, a quantum for the gravitational wave, having spin two, while the uh, electromagnetic wave is a photon, which quantum electromagnetic wave, is spin one. Okay, but 
in that case, because they're spinless, but they are massless particle with spin, the polarization state is always two. Now we can detect this uh, uh, longitudinal uh, elongation and uh, stretching and the uh, transverse polarization by uh, detecting the is measured the minute suppression and elongation in the orthogonal directions of caused by the propagation of your wave. So what we can do is use a micro interferometer, okay, and uh, uh, with with four pairs, with two pairs of mirrors, and with a beam splitter, uh, and uh, the two arms are optical cavities that increase optic path many factors. So a minute length change of the two arms, so one expands, the other compresses, will cause the interferon the, the the interference pattern, the fringe pattern, to 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 change. So this way to you know to detect the minute uh, elongation and compression in orthogonal directions. Of course, this, even though we have uh, was like bouncing back and forth in these uh, cavities, but still we want as long as possible. So therefore, these interferometers are huge, uh, um, many kilometer size. Okay, this is a picture of the. Uh, LIGO, so-called laser interferometer gravitational wave observatories built in Hanford, Washington State. There's another one built in Louisiana, and, uh, and they were also in Europe. So, okay. so there's still, so far there still uh, has no gravitational, direct detection of gravitational waves yet. And uh, uh, was what they're looking for is a, some some uh, huge astronomical event like a, a collision of two binaries and gen, gen enough a uh, strong enough gravitational waves to be detected. But anyway, so far, it's supposed to be on the verge for, for, for quite a few years now. They still have not did it. still, but we're confident the gravitational wave exists because we have some sense, somewhat indirect evidence of the existence of. Uh, Gravitational wave was predicted by GR. So already convinced evidence for the existence of GR gravitational wave. That's through the observation spent over 25 years at the uh, at the Arecibo uh, Observatory at Puerto Rico of the orbiting motion of relativistic uh, a binary star, one of being POSA, so the binary POSA system. And uh, the post of course, acting as an accurate, stable clock. <laughs> and uh, the idea is the uh, orbiting stars, which you really you can think two, 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 uh, two stars orbiting you. This is really ultimate the shaking of the mass we're talking about, not with general gravitational wave. <laughs> Even though these th they are 16 light years away, the base parameter system could be deduced by careful monitor of the radio pulse emitted from the pulsar. Okay. And the GR predicts that gravitational radio will carry away energy, so therefore reduce the orbit periods at the at a calculable rate. It was these two orbits will get, go faster and faster, so the period decreases. <coughs> <coughs> and uh, so this uh, the orbit decay, uh, GR can predict precisely, and they have been measured over, say, over a 25 year span, uh, or uh, find to be precisely as predicted by, by the GR theory. Okay, and here's uh, missing few points because uh, uh, because the RSC was under upgrading, so so it was shut down for uh, for a while. And, uh, but anyway, the it's amazing how 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 precisely the the observation tracks the predictions. So therefore, we we're, we're quite confident that gravitational wave exists as predicted by GR. And uh, here's a little tip I got from this, the Science Magazine I mentioned in March of this year. That uh, it says in a few hundred million years, the post uh, host Taylor binary will collide. 
because they almost fast fat eventually collapsed, emitting a new, more powerful burst of gravitational wave. Detectors such as advanced LIGO uh, will soon detect such signals from other pairs of perished stars, finally observing the gravitational wave that physicists are already sure are there. It was they, they we predict it will it will go faster faster and, and then close to each other and eventually collide, and uh, and those will generate a burst of gravitational wave that should be detected directly by the interferometer. Okay, the takeaways from lecture number thirteen. We say the gravitational field equation must involve curvature, which can be interpreted as the tidal gravity, and the uh, Remember, the tidal gravity was described by Newtonian deviation equation. In GR, they become the geodesic deviation equation involving the uh, <coughs> Riemann curvature. And Riemann curvature is a rank four tensor, and for field equation is, is a rank two. So we must make a contraction. But fortunately, contraction is essentially unique. There's only basically one way to contract from four to two tens the rank tensor because the symmetries of the tensor. And this leads to the combination called Einstein tensor, and that's fixed the left hand side of the field equation of the Ricci tensor minus one half Ricci scalar times the metric that is proportional to the T mu nu. <coughs> and we can show that this equation, this Einstein equation, leads to the correct Newtonian limit <coughs> and the fixed capital to be how proportional to the uh, to the Newton's constant, and shows besides mass, pressure can be a source of gravity. This is a very important observation when we run to talk about Einstein's cosmological constant, how GI can accommodate a gravitation, not only attraction, but also repulsion. And a key prediction of GI is the gravitational wave uh, with the tensor polarization. Attempt to uh, uh, we will try to people will try to attack directly this gravitational wave interferometer, but already there exists evidence that the observation through the observation of decay of the host Taylor binary pulses. So next lecture we will talk about solving the Einstein equation for for space time with spherical symmetric space. And uh, uh, this is so-called famous, this famous Schwarzschild solution, and uh, then many observations, in fact, follow from that.